Hello everyone, this is Jamie Starr for the New World News Network. On this episode, I want to address the election and the protests surrounding Donald Trump and just a, a bunch of this stuff overall because I haven't done a video in a while because things have been so tumultuous and crazy lately, I really don't feel comfortable adding any sort of uh, commentary or opinion towards things because I'm kind of concerned I'm going to make an ass of myself. Because you have instances like the Chicago protests where a group funded by George Soros, MoveOn.org or something like that, posed as Bernie Sanders supporters when they were actually a Clinton-backed group, posed as Bernie Sanders supporters and, you know, there was the whole riot and things getting shut down. And even myself on day one, you know, I had the reaction, oh, well, the socialists are being socialists. True to some extent, because the whole Democratic Party has sort of turned into this pseudo-socialist communist party. But wrong as far as whose supporters we all assumed it was. So instances like that and this sort of level of psyops and everything like that just has me really hesitant on covering things lately. So I apologize that my videos haven't been as frequent as they were. But I did want to, to get into this article and just mention some overall things about the election. You know, the other day I was seeing a news clip where they were talking about Trump's appeal and the point that was made, I believe it was on the Rubin Report. I forget the name of the guy he was interviewing, but it was a Trump supporter. I'm sure if you YouTube Rubin Report Trump supporter, you'll find it. But he was essentially talking about, and I believe this was the video, how Trump is the only alpha male out of the group. All the other ones are betas, and you can tell that. And even in conversations I have with people, you can tell that they want a beta male running things. You know, the Bernie Sanders, when Black Lives Matter came up and took the podium from him, and he just sort of, sort of stepped to the back and let them speak, Everyone thinks that's great, that's that's heroic, you know, that you're willing to just let people trample all over your event. Oh, well, that's, you know, kudos Sanders. That's the pinnacle of beta male, you know, oh, a woman came up and just told me, fuck your show, I'm running it now. And you just go acquiesce and do whatever, you know, to appease them. Trump's not like that. Trump is an alpha male. So I think that's, you know, one of the main things that is drawing people. They just like seeing someone with a backbone. We have we know Obama doesn't have one. We know Clinton, Bill Clinton didn't have one. We know Hillary's probably more of an alpha male than Cruz or Rubio or Sanders. So that's one of the aspects about this. Another one of the things that I've said as far as what makes me feel comfortable supporting Trump, because there were months where I myself was like, this has got to be a psyop, this whole thing's a sham, it's just, you know, whatever. And then I started seeing the opposition. I started to see the British royalty, the Saudi royalty, the Chinese government, the Mexican government, the Democrats, the Republicans, the media, Soros, and everyone giving it all they've got to go against him. And I looked at it like, well... If these are all the groups I can point to and say, they're fucking us over, they're fucking us over, they're fucking us over, they're fucking us over, and they're all fighting tooth and nail against Trump, there's got to be something good there. There has to be something there that they, I mean, because it wouldn't be at this level if it was just all a joke. Trump wouldn't be saying things like... There's a Saudi Bush 9-11 connection mentioning Bill Clinton being a rapist. There's just the no-go zones were hit. And I've also heard, and this, this I believe, Trump is extremely intelligent. And he knows a lot more than he's letting on. And he just sort of is playing a role. So, so from that standpoint, yes, it is an act. It's an act that he's just kind of this, you know, carefree buffoon who's just rich and, you know, doing whatever, saying whatever. This is, he, he, he's essentially turning the game on them. He knows the game so well that he's employing their tactics, where, you know, we all know Obama is a mass-murdering psychopath, but he just comes out there, and if he sings a little bit of Al Green and pops a joke, everyone just goes, ah, ha, ha, Obama, yeah, you know, so he's doing that, 
on them to another level. Again, in the Rubin Report interview I saw last night, the guy's talking about how all of our choices in life are generally made out of emotion. They're not made out of logic. If you make choices out of logic, you actually have to try very hard. So Trump is using emotional appeal. He's using all of the, the cards that the left normally uses and just flipping it against them. He's acting like he only has half a clue so that he's more relatable to people. He's, you know, so it's genius on his part. I mean, it is so genius. It, I wish I could do it. I mean, I nothing but respect for, for what he's doing and what he's trying to do. Because, it, like he said, you know, he makes jokes, bing, 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 bing. There's simple little things that if he were to just be like, no to this trade agreement, no to this one, we're leaving, you know, NATO, whatever, whatever. Like, things could end up getting fixed. It's a matter of what track you're going on. You know, generally when laws are first introduced, it takes them a while for them to kick in, like Obamacare. But all he's got to do is just divert the direction, and things will end up working out a lot better. The other difference between Trump and the oligarchs, because I've read Trump's books, I've also read parts of uh, Robert Kiyosaki's book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, which shows the, the view and the perspective between people who have money and wealth and people who don't. So for people saying Trump can't relate, no, he can. He, he knows very well that the difference between people with money and people without is their perspective and their ability to evaluate risk. So, whereas oligarchs like the Rothschilds and Rockefellers think competition should be a sin, Trump doesn't. Trump wants Americans to be wealthy. I mean, think it's so simple because he owns hotels and golf courses. If people don't have money to go to these places, he's not going to have money. So, there is a, you know, capitalist nature that is just ingrained into him because it's part of how he survives and does so well. And so he sees everyone as having money as a good thing because you essentially will have money to spend with him. So, you know, there's there's a laundry list of reasons why you could, you could support him. You know, he as far as nationalism, he is for having borders. He's against international trade agreements, and every other candidate, whether it's Sanders, Clinton, Cruz, Rubio, they're all complete globalists. And that's another one of the big lines I, I stand on, where it's, are they going to put these sort of corporate global interests as the main reason? I mean, and even Sanders, he may say he doesn't. He acts like it's for emotional whatever, that there's some starving Somalian kid that we need to bring in the country and take care of with welfare. But it's still the corporate globalist interest. And Trump isn't down with that. So, let's get into this article. A Trump rally in Chicago, Illinois, is canceled after protesters gained access to the pavilion where Trump was scheduled to speak. In Daytona, Ohio, a man rushed to the outdoor stage where Trump is delivering a speech before being restrained by Secret Service agents. Protests at Trump campaign in Kansas City, people are pepper sprayed by police in Salt Lake City, Utah. Protesters outside a venue where Trump is speaking confront pro-Trump people, throw rocks at supporters, and tear down a Secret Service screening site. Protesters in Arizona block the road that leads to a Trump rally in Fountain View, Arizona. And isn't it funny how they say that uh, Trump is the violent one? You know, he wasn't throwing rocks at anyone. Like, yeah, there's been a, a few little scuffles and everything like that. But, you know, from performing in rock bands and everything like that, it is no worse than your average festival. Like, this is just what happens when you have massive amounts of people together and emotions are running high and everything like that shit like this happens uh that's why you have bouncers to bounce people out on their heads it's not it's not rocket science and but when it's happening everyone is acting like it's a, like it's a surprise or like it's something we've never seen before and then you then have the media mixing clips where they'll show him saying oh i'll pay for your lawyer fees and then a clip from a different scuffle and sort of just intertwining them all so it just sort of seems like this ongoing long mess they do it with the uh the shooting incidents too anytime if someone gets shot oh you know this is the whatever whatever shooting of a unarmed black man or the whatever whatever mass school shooting or you know they try to keep this it's this ongoing issue that we need to stop rather than just saying okay yeah that happened over there 
yeah, the similar thing happened over here, but they're isolated different events. The only commonality in these is, you know, the Trump rally thing. So, um, another thing I want to point out real quick, Anonymous. I think it's very funny that Anonymous has come out and said that they need to take down the fascist Donald Trump by giving out his personal data and data collecting and sort of snooping and hacking. And it's amazing to me because the Nazis would target people. They would use data collection and what, you know, data they would get on people to go after and intimidate their political enemies. So you're basically fighting a fascist with fascism and fascist tactics. It's, it's this sort of disconnect I continually see. The, the people standing up for peace and equality are the ones shouting people down and throwing rocks at them. The people who are fighting fascism are using fascist tactics left and right. It just keeps going on. And there's such a disconnect. And I, I don't know where it comes. My, my only guess is the education system. The education system is just drilling into these people's heads and causing it so they can't think. Like it's... And then part of this is, is shown in this article. On the right, there are serious doubts about Trump's sincerity when it comes to policies or positions near and dear to conservatives. The conservative movement in America has largely purged itself of its racist nationalists, which now flock to Trump's rhetoric, despite the left's best attempts to describe conservatism as some stealth racist movement. This, what you have going on, and, and this is the way things really work, is... Certain groups that have certain beliefs vote for certain policies. The KKK will always vote for whoever is going to keep abortion going. Some years there are more blacks aborted in New York than born. Who do you think likes that? The KKK does. So they're going to back whatever candidate backs abortion. They backed Obama because of this. Same with welfare. They see welfare as a way to keep people on the government plantation. If they're on welfare, they're not excelling themselves in any sort of manner. They're just getting their government rations, so they will back whoever backs the welfare state. The KKK has always been the terrorist arm of the Democrats, and they always vote Democratic because of it. So... You also, though, have some of these other nationalist groups, white supremacist groups, whatever, backing Trump over the closed border thing. I mean, that was David Duke's whole thing. He came out and said, I don't really like Trump, I don't really endorse him, but I like his immigration policy. And he's the only one with a policy like that. <clears throat> That's how that whole bit happened. It wasn't him being like... Oh, well, we need to keep our white supremacy in place, so let's, you know, make sure we vote for this guy because he's a white supremacist. No, not at all. It's, it's not that simple. But that's how the Democrats train their followers to think. They regularly refer to innocent statements as dog whistle truisms. This, if you saw my Melissa Harris Para video, she was one of the, the top people employing this tactic. If one refers to states' rights in the context of gay marriage, the left to the left, that is just dog whistle statements to Jim Crow laws, and the list goes on. Another perfect example is using the phrase welfare reform. To the rest, this is simply implied racist utterance. This writer contends that if no one sees or hears race in every statement, the listener is a true racist. So it's, you know, why if you say abortion, then you're anti-woman. If you say immigration, you're anti-Mexican. If you say welfare, you're anti-black. And they've trained people to think in this manner, and it has this sort of snobby intellectualist, you know, overlay to it where these people think they're the only, like, they think they're catching on to something, like it's an aha moment, and that's why they stay viewing things like this, because there's this sort of self-righteous, self-gratifying, you know, like, you figured out the puzzle, like, the person wasn't just talking about reforming immigration, they were actually talking about how much they hate Mexicans, and you're the only one smart enough to figure it out. It's an insane narcissism, really, that just keeps this going and I and you see it in these in these leftists where again they're so narcissistic and they're so self-righteous that they will punch someone in the face and be like 
well, I had to punch him in the face for peace and justice. And it's like, really? I mean, you look at these people like they have fucking extra heads growing out of their shoulders and shit. So, um, this article goes on and says, you know, I don't know if Trump is racist, but I know he's not a conservative. And this is one of the things that, you know, I keep hearing now people, they've said it from the beginning, oh, well, he's not a real Republican, he's not a conservative. That's a good thing. We're, people are sick of these parties. People are sick of it being so, oh, over there, whoa, over there. I mean, realistically, as far as social policies go, Trump is a liberal. Trump doesn't care what you do with yourself and your free time and everything like that. I mean, he doesn't want these crazy black market, you know, drug smuggling going on and everything like that. But it's, it's, he's, you know, conservative as far as spending and the economy and everything like that, but he's liberally, socially liberal, which, I mean, I definitely, that's the same way I see myself, and a lot of people see themselves like that. They, they aren't so divided and stuck in these party lines anymore, and Trump is more of a centrist and a populist, and that's, again, what's, what's fueling this, and some people can't stand that. They need people in these boxes. They need to know, oh, well, if you're a conservative, this means this, 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 and this. You don't have any individuality. You don't have any difference. You are a part of that herd, and it's because people are able to then attack you by that, they prefer things to be that simple, that cut and dry. Um, so, let's see... The, the main thing here, you know, we have, they go on about the George Soros printed signs and the whole thing about how they were coached to protest and to shut down the thing. And this person who is a conservative is basically saying they just, they don't want the help from the left because the help from the left is amplifying this. In Kansas City, Mille, there were representatives from Black Lives Matter movement in Chicago, the radical Latino group La Raza was well represented in Salt Lake City, a local radical Latino group. Proteo Latino that led to rock throwing. One suspects that at this campaign draws on, more and more leftist groups will join the cause and protest Trump. Now, you don't see the KKK showing up to uh, Bernie Sanders rallies or, you know, a white national nationalist group at a Hillary Sanders thing. And that's the funny thing. Again, they're saying something and the opposite's happening. They're saying Trump is inciting violence and problems. But if you look at it on a level, like, you know, okay, so there was one guy out of 20,000 that decided to punch some rude person in the face because they were so, you know, compelled and emotional and everything like that. And then, on the other side, you have mobs of people inciting violence. But as long as they're, you know, locking arms and throwing up peace signs and fucking trampling people while saying, excuse me, well, then that's just peace and justice and free speech and hippy-dippy liberal nonsense. It's, it's insane. It really is. Um, if there's anything true conservative dislikes more than a fake conservative, it is a liberal, or more specifically, the radical American left. By that contingent, joining the course against Donald Trump, they are doing two things. First, they are not changing minds of the Trump supporters. If anything, they are confirming in their minds what Trump is saying. Yes. Protesting, shouting down, throwing rocks, and verbally assault, verbally and sometimes violently confirming Trump's supporters only solidifies their support. Second, their actions only generate sympathy for Trump among the fence-sitters. The last thing the Republican Party or conservative needs is people to flock to Donald Trump based on emotion, and sympathy is certainly an emotion. With every violent confrontation, these groups are driving people to Trump out of spite. Exactly. And that's, again, Trump is playing this game very well, and he's definitely... They're, they're going to have to steal it from him in some way, because... It's, it's, he's going to end up winning. Now, now, my prediction, as far as what's going to happen, because like I said, I, I backed him as an enemy of my enemy is my friend, because the Saudis, the British, the Mexican, the Chinese, the Democrats, the Republicans, the media, and everyone I dislike hates him. So I know there's something good there. Um, but this is either going to go two directions. 
you are going to have these radicalized groups and everything like that. And then if they steal the election, that will radicalize Trump's supporters. Trump isn't going to be the one radicalizing them. Let me say that twice, just so it's clear. Trump is not going to be the one radicalizing his supporters and leading them to violence. It will be the GOP and the Republican Party stealing the nomination from Trump. Now, I hope Trump runs third party. And I've heard that there are some methods that he has up, tricks up his sleeve to stop this. But Trump's supporters will turn ugly when the Republican establishment tries to steal this from them. And what you're going to see happen is they are then going to try, even though the Trump supporters' beef will be with the Republican establishment, they are going to try to divert that towards the La Raza, Black Lives Matter, Move On, George Soros-funded groups. And essentially, it will, because they've painted Trump as a racist and perception is reality, that will be the race war that they've been pushing for since the 1960s. As crazy as it will sound, Charles Manson will be a prophet, like, and will be prolific beyond his, you know, you know, years and whatnot, because he had always said that this was the plan. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that Charles Manson was buddy-buddy with the Beach Boys and lots of top Hollywood. Lots of top Hollywood kids would send, or the kids of top Hollywood would go hang out at the Manson family ranch. So he knew what was going on. He knew that the media was pushing people and manipulating them in a direction. The same thing, you had Al Gore come out and say, we need a democratic spring, like the Arab Spring. That's why social media is perpetuating this and, and fueling it. You, you Same thing. I'm sorry, I'm getting stuttery. Um, you have the same thing go on in Egypt with the Arab Spring and everything like that. It's a battle plan. It is a methodology of war and taking down a country. And we have done this to all these Middle Eastern countries. And no one seems to be aware that the same tactics are now being employed here. I even on Facebook, you know, I've had several friends and this week just be like, I can't go on here anymore. The hate is too much. I'd even said I, the thing I look forward to most is everything I thought was corny. Pictures of people's fucking dinners and pictures of their kids getting ready for school. I would rather see that than the amount of hate and animosity that is fueling social networks. And it is this herd mentality where people just feed into it. I feed into it. Everyone feeds into it. But at some point, we need to catch ourselves and, and stop ourselves and say, is this really what's best? Is this really how I should be responding to this? It's not that deep. It's not that serious. And you really can't let yourself get that wrapped up in it, because then you risk the chance of being radicalized yourself. Therefore, the American left needs to stop the recruitment and fundraising campaigns, put down the rocks, signs and banners, and just shut the hell up. Let the GOP and conservatism take care of its own. This guy's condoning them stealing the race from Trump. You had it on a news broadcast even where people were talking about how the party elects the front runner, not the people. And the person was like, well, why do we even hold primaries then? Why do we even let the public vote? And the person went and said, that's a good, that's a good question. So they're openly now just stealing elections at the primary level in front of people. At this point, they are causing more damage believing they are doing something to stop the Trump train. Regardless of these people who like to protest than they are, by large, the refuse of the Occupy Wall Street movement, that hedge pot of leftist nonsense that rioted in the streets of Seattle and defecated on police cars in New York City. One guesses that they would be likely to protest a Ted Cruz rally if Donald Trump had remained a real estate mogul in 2016. They are not protesting Donald Trump. He is just the current flashpoint. They are protesting us, and by doing so, drawing people to Donald Trump. Uh, you know, I think he's right to some extent. But I don't think he's right. Now, let me, let me explain this. Within my local area, you recently had a, a tragedy happen where a kid was shot uh, just being out and about, wrong place, wrong time. And you now have protests going on. People marching through the streets, stop the violence, so on and so forth. And 
it's almost like whatever is in vogue at the time will will just be you know there, there'll be a protest about it it's it is sort of like people are just wound up and there's so much social animosity that it's the only way they know how to how to deal with these issues you know a a much better there are so many better approaches like i just some of it i just look at and it's like all right well what is going for a walk going to do to to stop this like you'd have a lot better chances if you stop the catchy catchphrases and sat down and said you know what we need a neighborhood watch we need a community outreach group we need this this and that but the problem is and i've had friends of mine point this out when tragedies happen there's a bandwagon that goes on and unfortunately that bandwagon only lasts a good two to maybe six months at the most i six months i think has given it way too much maybe two months and then everyone goes back to their business that's why things like a neighborhood watch or community outreach won't, won't ever come to fruition because the fire is extinguished they're no longer all worked up for that's why protests and marches though those will happen because everyone just feels this way and you're literally out there burning up the energy you're burning up the fire and then it extinguishes and everything goes on and that's also why you have these rent -a mobs being used against Trump because there's very few people without the economic incentive of them getting paid that I think would really care that much like yeah there are people who are just looking for something to riot about and, and go on but on the same token I think people are busy I think they have stuff to do I mean I guess this is helping on employment in some sort of weird way but it's just I don't know as as with all the other attempts it's very forced it's very contrived and I don't see it as working out well and I think this guy knows exactly what's going on I don't agree with his objectives obviously but he obviously is aware that everything people are trying to do against Trump is backfiring on them drastically. So, just wanted to cover that. Um, as far as my, my overall views on the election, and I'll say this, um, this only goes two ways. They're either going to steal the election, you're going to have it build and foment into a race war clash of civilizations between the two, two parties and everything, or you are going to have a 9-11 style attack that will scare everyone out of this division and they will actually come together in, in fear like how America did on 9-11. And, you know, there may be a new enemy, Russia, Korea, something like that, and everyone will unite against that enemy but you will also have obama cancel the elections so then that will still steal the election from trump his supporters will become restless and it's this is this doesn't end well that's that's all i can say and that's the worst thing about it and that's again why it's sort of discouraging covering all this stuff lately because it's just not going to end well. It's going to end with mayhem and chaos and the police in the streets with tanks. And it's going to be a messy year. If you can get out of the country, I would encourage you to get out of the country. Um, other than that, just be prepared. Make sure you have food, water, and you can take care of yourselves for... A month or two, I would say. I don't think it's going to be, you know, like day after tomorrow type I am legend shit going on. But it's gonna get rough and that's that's all I all I can say really as far as it this doesn't end well. It just doesn't. You can see it from here. So that was this article. I hope everyone enjoyed. Hopefully there'll be some not so serious news that I'll feel comfortable covering and I'll keep the videos coming. If there's anything anyone wants me to cover, feel free to post comments, send me links. I I love criticism and people to help. So, everyone take care.